She's about my age. She's a voracious reader. She's well-educated. She has a curious mind. She probably took French in high school, maybe even college. But unfortunately, she let her language skills slip a bit, and she regrets it. She's traveled to Europe, or she's been dreaming of it for a while now. She has warm memories of spending time in dark libraries. She's just dying for a little bit of excitement and romance in her life. Nope, she's not a friend of mine. She's my ideal reader. Some of you write for yourselves, or you write the story you want to read, and that's fair enough. But I think that if your goal is to sell more books, get traditionally published, or market yourself effectively, i.e. if your goal is commercial success, you're going to want to think of your ideal reader. And this doesn't mean that you always have to write directly to that ideal reader, but it can absolutely help you to hone your message and your outreach. Some people ask, aren't I my own ideal reader? And in some ways, yes, you are. But in some ways, your ideal reader is not exactly you because you are first and foremost a writer they're a reader. You have different places that you hang out online. You have different ways that you spend your time and you have different preoccupations from this ideal reader. Now, last week on the How to Be an Author podcast, we talked about why your friends and family are not your audience. And it may have left you thinking, well, come on, who is my reader then? Who is my audience? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Authors often struggle with their message. They struggle with marketing. They feel like it's kind of icky to try to sell their books. And figuring out how your ideal reader is makes it fun, not icky. You also hear that marketers advise people to look at data points when they're trying to figure out a marketing campaign. And I know that to you, a writer who's a creative, this might feel really unnatural. Well, finding your reader, thinking of your ideal reader, and constructing your ideal reader avatar is a more creatively based method of reaching the same conclusions as hard data. So today on the How to Be an Author podcast, we're going to be talking about who is your audience? Who's that ideal reader? Why is it so important to know who they are? How do you define exactly who they are? How does this help you to find them, reach them, and interact with them? And how will you use all of this to better publish your book and better sell your book? It's going to be a really valuable episode that will just turn your thinking around in a really short time. So get comfortable because we're about to talk ideal reader. If you're a writer dreaming of becoming a successful author, join me, writing coach Karenna Akavane, on the How to Be an Author podcast, your weekly source for writing information, inspiration, and motivation. So how do you find this ideal audience person of yours? How do you find your ideal reader? How do you construct your ideal reader avatar? If you're writing in multiple genres or different disciplines, you might have more than one ideal reader. So don't get confused. Don't get them mixed up. You're going to be wanting to address one of these ideal readers at a time. Business coaches around the world have been using this ideal client or ideal customer worksheet for years and years, and they get super specific because the more specific you get, The more you niche down, the more you create a really detailed ideal reader avatar, the more, oddly enough, you're going to get something that resonates with that one reader, and you're going to be able to really have them feel heard and seen. And what that does is it makes that reader a super fan. It is so much more valuable for you to have just a few super fans than it is to have a bunch of people who vaguely like to read, but who aren't really perfectly catered to your book. They're not exactly matched. And so when you're trying to advertise your book, you're trying to market your book, you may or may not be touching them. You may or may not be reaching them. You may or may not be saying something that they want to hear. So figuring out your reader avatar is going to make your messaging much more on point. And oddly enough, though, 
this resonance that you're going to create is probably going to make those super fans in turn tell other readers why they might enjoy your book. So you're basically creating an avalanche of readers from this beginning super fan who resonated with this perfect avatar that you created. So how do we build this? We're going to start with the most general demographics. What are these general demographics? Well, they're age, they're sex, they're whether you're married or single, whether you have kids or not. You know, there are very many genres that appeal to specific age groups. And this doesn't mean they won't appeal to someone else, but it's definitely a good start. Think about Harry Potter. Harry Potter was meant to appeal to kids of a certain age, but look at all the adults who are super enjoying Harry Potter, probably because their kids were like, oh my God, you need to read this. I love this book so much. And the adults were thinking, okay, they adore this. Let me check it out. And there's enough in Harry Potter that yes, it can have a broader audience, but it is catered so well to kids of a certain age. Now, think about these things. Is my ideal reader single, for example, or are they married? That, in terms of how you write your book, also could impact things. And whether they have kids or not is going to impact whether they want to read that kid stuff or whether they're seeking an escape from their kids or whether they have very much time to read in the first place. When you have kids, that really impacts your priorities and many of your interests. So all of a sudden, you find yourself wanting to read things about moms, for example, or about moms who kind of bust out and go on a rampage or something like that, that you would never have cared about before you had kids. So if you're writing something like that, you want to know that your ideal reader avatar is someone who has kids or is thinking about kids. Now let's move on to secondary demographics. These are like little subgroups within the general, you know, men, women in this country. So we're going to be talking about ethnicities. We're going to be talking about religion. We're going to be talking about geography. You're getting more specific here. And then you can start to combine these things. So, you know, let's start with the demographics of like, okay, my reader actually is from the South of the United States. Like think about The Help. This was a book that was aimed at probably readers who had some knowledge of the American South, but it wasn't limited to those people at all. You can have other books that are geared towards religion. For example, if you had a book about uh, an Orthodox Jew and growing up in that kind of world, maybe that's primarily going to attract people who grew up in and around the Orthodox community, but then it can start to interest people who were curious about that. And because it resonated with so many people in that community, it's going to be getting more play. It's going to be getting more downloads. It might be getting more media attraction. So then you're going to be getting that overflow into other groups as well. Now let's get a little more specific so you can have things where you combine these groups and subgroups. For example, gay teens. What are they reading? Christian moms, what's going to interest them? What kind of style of book? What kind of subject matter? How about military wives? That's another really great subgroup that has a lot of time on their hands and they're looking for a lot of entertainment, but also they've got this really specific regional attachment, the fact that they move around a lot, all of that's really important. How about single dads or urban professional women? You're starting to see the possibilities of starting to section down who your reader might be. Now we can get even more specific. What about their interests or what they hope for or what they worry about or how they dress? All of these things impact the style of book that they're going to read. So think about, you know, if you've got somebody who's got this hobby that they love to knit and your book is about knitting, well, fantastic. You've just found a match, right? What about if somebody's got this history of abuse in their family, for example? Well, if your book's about that, automatically this is a great fit. Or maybe somebody's passionate about dragons or witchcraft or travel. But like, let's say we're talking about travel. Let's get more specific. They're obsessed with travel in Tuscany. Now, if that's your book, you've got a match. 
right? So this is a really important thing to think about. I spoke with a writer once who specializes in writing books about military people. And it's kind of funny because he was never a military man himself, but it really fascinated him for multiple reasons. Uh, He had friends of the family who were in the military, and he was always interested in physical fitness and, you know, started looking at the boot camp thing. And that took him to going to trainings with military. And then he started interviewing soldiers and families of soldiers, spending a lot of time with those military families. And it really helped him to get his writing to where it needed to be so that those military people became super fans. They felt like they were being seen. They felt like they were being addressed specifically. And so this writer's work is super, super popular, probably not only with military people, but with anybody who's got a vague interest with that kind of character. And knowing that his books are so popular, he's been on multiple podcasts. He's been on all these interest groups. He's been featured in a lot of the media. And so this is where he starts to get fans beyond those initial super fans. So that's a really good thing to think about when you're building your audience or reader avatar. You know, what are they interested in? And also, why do they read? That's another really important question because why they read kind of contributes to how they read, how much they read. So are they reading for escapism? Are they reading for entertainment? Are they reading for, you know, that me time, that getaway? Are they reading when they're on vacation? And how much time do they have to read? Like, what's their attention span, first of all? Or are they sneaking in a quick read while they're on a work break or while the kid's taking a nap? Or are they able to devour books in a single sitting. This all impacts how they interact with your book and maybe the pacing that you're going to be writing in. Now what you're going to do is that you're going to interview some people who are fans of writing that is close to what you think you're doing, or you're going to interview people who are close to what you think your ideal reader avatar may be. Now, this sounds kind of intimidating, but these people can be a family member or a friend, or they can be people who are on Facebook groups or, you know, that you interact with on TikTok, anything like that. You can find a lot of really low pressure ways of interacting with people so that you can ask them about their hobbies, ask them about their fears, who they are as a person, better understand how they pick their books that they read, how they find books, how they interact with books. You know, maybe they read books, reread them, you know, and this is going to help you to figure out where do I find these people and what kind of emails am I going to be sending them once they're on my list? Because I've said this before, but building a mailing list of potential readers is one of the best things you can do for your author platform. So just knowing all this information about your ideal reader avatar helps you to write emails that are going to resonate with them and they're not just going to delete them or ask to unsubscribe because you're sending them stuff that they find boring. So some people like to just scribble down the answers to all these questions in terms of, you know, what's my ideal readers, religion, geography, educational background, you know, all of that. I like to create vision boards and many of you create character aesthetic boards. So this is the same general thing, except it's for your ideal reader. So you can do this either by ripping out pieces of magazines, or you can do it in Pinterest, or you can do it on some app. Do it any way that makes you happy. But for me, seeing my ideal reader board on my wall kind of inspires me a lot when I'm in the process of both writing and marketing my books. So we talked about how finding this perfect reader avatar is going to help you in multiple ways. And this is going to be a little bit surprising for you, but it does make sense you know, it does impact, as I was mentioning before, your writing. So think about this. How would you tailor a letter that you would write to your grandmother versus an email or a text you're sending to a casual friend? This is the same thing. When you're writing your book, think about the level of the language. Think about the sense of humor. Think of the cultural references. Think of, you know, what kind of level of language or whether it's gory or scary or whether you have a lot of racy content in it. Knowing who you're telling your story to is going to help you to tell it in a way that's going to really resonate with a certain type of person. So if your style, pacing, and language are kind of off for your ideal reader, you might make it so that they don't relate to your book as much. And so this is really interesting because oftentimes people who have an interest, like let's say things go together. Let's say that your book is about 
a cozy mystery about knitting. Okay, cool. A lot of people who knit, you know, some of them are, are on that racier end of the whole uh, knitting line, but many people are knitting and they kind of have that down-home aesthetic. Maybe they like to take things slow. They maybe live somewhere that's not such a busy lifestyle. They have a lot of time to spend on their hobbies. So think about the type of pacing and the type of content that's going to interest a person like that. You could easily turn them off if there's a disconnect between what you're giving them in your book stylistically and what they're like in their life. I always think about the things in my book that would most excite my ideal reader, and I often think about what the best way is for me to express that to them. I think that's really crucial when it comes to your whole writing process. That really, really helps to write a book that is going to be devoured by that ideal reader who's then going to become a super fan, who's going to champion your book to everyone around them. So I talked about how having this ideal reader avatar could possibly help you to get traditionally published. It's not magic. It's really something that actually does quite directly help. Let me explain. If you missed the episode of How to Be an Author that dealt with your literary genres, you're really going to want to listen to that because it's going to help you to understand a little bit of what agents and publishers are looking for. They're definitely looking for a book they can sell. So the first thing that that takes is you knowing your genre and you knowing your genre conventions and what those readers expect. So this is the first layer of, you know, ideal reader or your potential reader. Think about people who are selling a product, right? You need to know who is going to need this product, want this product, who this product's going to appeal to, and why. What kind of a service are you providing with this product? What kind of an improvement in life? And in terms of a book, that improvement in life is delivering a great story, inspiring, entertaining, all of that good stuff. So what's important when you have a product, just as much as when you have a book, is that there is an easy-to-define pre-existing market for this product. Once you understand what that pre-existing fundamental market is, you can branch out to secondary markets. I had mentioned Harry Potter, how it started off for kids, but now there are a bunch of adults that are obsessed with it too. Agents and publishers really like to see a book that is clear about what it is and who it appeals to. So that's the magic alchemy for most genres. For agents, it's a book that will appeal to a well-defined audience, but has maybe a new twist so that it's not so cliche, so that it's a little bit surprising, so that people will be delighted. They know what to expect, and now you're subverting it, but in a fun way that doesn't go too far and doesn't alienate them. Now, in terms of marketing, you can start to see how getting specific with an ideal reader is going to help you to find where that reader hangs out. And don't worry, this is not going to actively exclude other types of readers. Someone who doesn't fit your mold exactly can still find and enjoy your book. However, if you're not crystal clear in your messaging, you could actually alienate readers because let's say that you've got a futuristic, you know, thriller or adventure book, and you're kind of trying to attract romance readers to it, and there's not that romance trope or there's not that romance feel that these readers are expecting, they might give you some bad reviews. They might say, you know, this book wasn't for me, and I don't know why um, this messaging was tailored to me when it's not for me. So you need to know that there shouldn't be a disconnect between who your book is actually written for and who you are trying to reach in terms of your advertising. And this is really, really important because oftentimes you need to advertise to sell books. In fact, always, you need to advertise and market the crap out of it. But knowing your target market is going to save you money, time, and energy. That's because attaining a small number of highly engaged, very specific readers is going to be more efficacious than trying to kind of shoot large and you know, kind of lob things towards this more general, kind of nebulous, much larger group that's not specifically going to pay attention to your book. So paid advertising will pay off much more when you've narrowed down who you're advertising to, to the people that you really think are going to enjoy your book and get the most out of it. So when you know your ideal reader also, you're going to know much more 
where they're hanging out, whether that's in real life or in the virtual world. And that's going to help you to reach them with your messaging. So which places do ideal readers hang out in? Think about where you hang out online and then extend that. So are they hanging out on pages on Facebook? So the pages I'm talking about can be fan pages for authors of fiction that's kind of similar to what you're writing. So there are a bunch of fan pages for different authors. So start looking at those and start seeing how readers are interacting with those pages. Are they trying to comment on the book? Are they trying to interact with each other? Are they trying to look for the next best read? All of these things are going to be really useful for you to know and to watch and be familiar with because those fans can become your fans. Also on Facebook, you have some pages for people who like certain things. So on Facebook, I kind of got myself onto pages of people who are fascinated with France. I got myself onto pages for people who are fascinated with historical literature, for people who are fascinated with visiting old villages. All of these things really dovetail really well with my book, Written in Stone. So when I was able to find these people who are obsessed with that ancient French history and with, you know, escapism and with fantasizing about French villages and vacationing in France, that gave me access to a lot of potential readers. There are a bunch of social media groups for people who like knitting or writing or, you know, van life, all of these things. If your book kind of fits in with that reader who's going to enjoy those things, interact with them, make friends with them online. You absolutely can do that. Also watch Instagram or YouTube accounts or TikTok accounts that appeal to those readers as well and emulate that. You can start making some videos that are going to start appealing to those readers. What kind of content are you putting on your videos? Make sure that you niche down to where you're creating something that represents you as an author and your book so that these readers understand that, hey, this person has something to say. I'm enjoying this content. There's a good chance that I'm going to enjoy what they've written. And think about not just your style of writing, but also that subgenre that you have and the subject and the location of your book. All of that good stuff is really important. Now think also about what kind of magazines do they read, whether it's paper magazines or online magazines, it might be absolutely worth it for you to try to pursue a guest writer spot on one of those magazines, write an article or even a blog post as a guest blogger or a guest on a podcast that these people listen to. All of these things are starting to get you in front of that ideal reader. Think also about influencers that these people follow. And you can start to emulate the tone and the style that these influencers have without losing your own tone and style, but they're probably already pretty similar to what you're like and emulating them a little bit, not the whole way, but it's going to help you to level up a little bit in your messaging and in your style so that it's crystal clear. Finally, think about what kind of events people who would enjoy your books attend. You know, maybe they attend wine events. Maybe they attend book events. Maybe they attend sailing events. You know, think about what is going to please them and you can strike up conversations or have a more official presence. You know, ask for a table at this event where you're signing books or, you know, ask to be a speaker someplace at an event that gathers people who have an interest in books like yours. I find that one of the big mistakes that writers do is that they don't always think about all the ways that their ideal reader could possibly be exposed to their book and what the things are that would make them want to read it. But this is the most basic fundamental level of marketing and advertising for you. And then the other thing that writers do that really is a big mistake when it comes to marketing. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's probably not the best use of your time and energy and maybe even money is they seem to market to other writers as a writer. And that's fine. Other writers do read books as well. So maybe it's a good place to start when you're first starting to, you know, market your book. It's probably an existing community that you already have, but also make sure that those writers know that you've written a book that they would enjoy reading. It's all about the messaging and you cannot be too clear about this. So absolute clarity in knowing who your reader is, how you're going to find them and how you're going to talk to them 
All of those things are going to streamline your writing process and your marketing and advertising process so that you can have the most success possible for your book and for the next one and the next one after that. This really becomes second nature and you're going to be just incorporating all of this much more naturally with the next book and the next. So this is a short and sweet episode that I really hope is going to transform the way you think about the writing process, the marketing process, and all of those other good things that really take an aspiring writer through the whole thing of being an author and then a successful author beyond that. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on my email, K-A-R-E-N-A at spalmorum, S-P-A-L-M-O-R-U-M dot com, or check out my website, www.creativeandwritingcoach.com, or of course, my TikTok, at writingcoach, and my Instagram, at writing.coach. I'm all over the place. You can't miss me. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and tell all your writer friends about it because we raise each other up as writers. And the more writers we have out there who are happy and successful, the more great books we have out there, the more readers we are going to be fostering who are going to be thinking that reading is an awesome thing. It all makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. And I'm looking forward to being with you next time on the How to Be an Author podcast. If you have any pressing writing-related questions or would like to be featured on the How to Be an Author podcast, please feel free to reach out on my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com. 